Far Cry Primal, we wanted the player to experience the fantasy of being the Beastmaster. Each one of the companions was a weapon. We wanted them to collect them all and use them to conquer Oros. Far Cry 4 was the first in the brand series to introduce companion animals. We introduced the iconic Shangri-La tiger as part of the Shangri-La experience. The AI behind it, though, was not systemic, unlike traditional AI in Far Cry. The Shangri-La Tiger used a custom brain tailored to the experience of Shangri-La. This gave us a lot of flexibility in how we designed every piece of code. When the Toronto studio joined the Primal team, we had initially pitched many different prototypes. From an AI perspective, we had many challenges. The first was the co-development process. We had three separate studios working around the globe on this project. Each one of them was working on different parts of the AI. This was compounded by the fact that there's multiple brains both animals and NPC humanoids. From an architectural standpoint, we wanted to make sure that the companion code was decoupled from the systemic AI brains we currently had in the game. To resolve the, the challenges we were faced, we came up with a solution called Dynamic Behavior Tree Injection. Essentially, we wrote a bunch of hooks that we could connect to at any time and override the systemic behavior while injecting new behaviors directed by the player. This approach allowed each individual team to work in separate workspaces and minimize the risk of introducing bugs into other people's source code. It was important for us to maintain as much of the systemic functionality as possible. This began a whole discussion about systemic versus directed behaviors. We didn't want to impact the existing gameplay experiences the player had come to love in the Far Cry series. It was important for us to always maintain anecdotes and systemic functionality. On the other hand though, we wanted to have the ability to direct the animal at any time. Navigation was another concern. The player was able to go places companions just didn't have the ability to go to. We had strict conditions and, and metrics on our nav mesh. We had many different cases we had to follow because of the different animals we had in our roster. It was for this reason we added aggressive teleportation. The ability for the animal to pop in and out of view quickly and spawn right next to the player again. We did some tricks though. We wanted to make sure that the animal always teleported when it wasn't in view. This way it didn't break the fantasy that you could see the lines of code, so to speak. I always laugh when talking about the follow mechanic because really if the animal is doing his job, he'll actually be guiding and leading the player throughout the world. Cliffs are a natural enemy for companions. We faced many troubles throughout the development process with cliffs. Ever-evolving level designs constantly required us to go and check different clips to make sure our animals work correctly with them. In the end, we realized we couldn't add fences everywhere, we couldn't add invisible volumes, we had to fix the problem in code. So our solution to the problem was to add basically companion breaks. If you got too near a cliff, you would automatically slow down regardless of how fast the player was going. So after we figured out the player speed and applied the 30% adjustment, or whatever the value may be at that specific moment, we realized we had to apply the breaks. So what we did was we did a navigation mesh recast to figure out the distance to the edge. Then all we did was reduce the speed down enough so this way there was enough time for the animal to stop. So when the player was stopped and everything was quiet, we had to ask ourselves, what exactly is the companion to do? Is it a robot? Is it systemic? Where's that fine line? This is the moment when we asked ourselves, is it okay to idle? Is it okay to become systemic? So this was important from a, a philosophical perspective because we didn't want the animal to feel robotic. We wanted to feel reactive and alive. We didn't want it to break the immersion of being the beast master. In Primal, we established an emotional bond with the player and the beast through the initial taming mechanic. We added the ability to pet and feed the animal to reestablish the emotional connection between the player and their beast. Although there aren't too many gameplay effects of this, it was an emotional effect on the player, saying, this is my animal. They were able to pet their saber-toothed tiger, and the saber-toothed tiger loved them. The reviewers on social media loved it. It was a great feature that nobody expected in the game. We faced many challenges when creating Far Cry Primal's intelligent AI. Ever-evolving level designs, open world environments, systemic behavior. What we learned was Understanding the role, that was the most important thing because it drove most of our decisions throughout the project. Understanding the balance between systemic and directed behavior and when is appropriate for one to happen versus the other. Understanding the priorities makes an impact on the gameplay experience. Iterate like crazy. Understand that the first version is not going to necessarily work the way you want. And of course, the most important thing, add the little moments. Add the moments that give you the warm and fuzzies and the gameplay experience to make the players go, ah, oh, I love that.